Since our last reset, I spent a week on Tybee Island, quit my job, shipped myself off to South America, quick trip to Kansas City for a funeral, became an unemployed lump on a log, officially got a new job, continued lumpy loggedness counting down the days to the new job while working to heal burnout and find purpose outside of work, and finally I began my new job as a pediatric medical social worker, worked one week, flew to Missouri for two days, and have started to get a little bit acclimated to my new routine just to pick up and jet out of the country again later this week. And that's what you missed on Glee. No, but welcome to the first reset vlog in like three months, I think. The last one I did was the beginning of March and then my world has spiraled, skyrocketed. Everything is so different. <laughs> so I feel it's a bit overdue and I also am excited for it. In today's reset video, I'm doing both physical and mental reset. The physical reset are things that just need to get done like dishes, laundry, vacuum, wipe down the bathroom, wipe down the kitchen counters, those kinds of things. So that will be sprinkled throughout. But then we'll also be doing the more mental type of reset, doing a yearly goal check-in for those goals that I set back in January. Now that we're almost halfway through the year, talking about new focuses going forward, especially diving into the nine to five life, going through some of the monthly metrics like YouTube analytics, books read. So I'm very excited. I'm really glad you're here. Let's start with a little bit of our physical reset. At the end of our last reset, this is what we were working with as far as the 2023 goal bingo went. I had accomplished three of my goals and also did the free space, obviously. At the beginning of March, I had gone to the dentist, I had maxed out my 2022 Roth IRA, and I had gotten my school social work certification. In the months since then, I guess we can just go left to right, I did quit my job. The specification there is before June. I quit my job March 3rd. With this goal bingo, I don't know what my reward is for getting a bingo, but it is just kind of fun. And so I'll figure it out when we get there. Obviously the goal is blackout, but we'll see. This is a funny one, 52 booktube videos. I have not posted on the booktube channel that I made since the beginning of March, because like I said, life spiraled. I haven't decided yet if I'll continue to post over on that channel or if I'll just do the booktube content that I was wanting to do and was really fun for me to do on this channel. Haven't really decided, but I definitely have not posted 52 videos over there. My laptop is set to get paid off in September. This goal was 5k followers on TikTok. Right now, I guess we can check what I'm sitting at. Right now, I'm sitting at 3,368. If you're not following me on TikTok, but you'd like to, kind of upped my game recently. 10k in savings. I am not there. I may be there by the end of the summer. Not sure. Finished laser hair removal treatments. I have done, I think I've done seven by now, and usually 10 is kind of the, okay, you're done at that point, but you can come back for checkups. Getting a massage, I'm saving for when I really need it. Saving it for a rainy day. This one is actually so much closer than I thought it maybe would be. It really, 5K is really just an arbitrary number. YouTube growth isn't something that I place too much value in. Like obviously it is fun whenever new subscribers come, but it's not like, oh, if new subscribers weren't coming, I would stop. So it is really exciting, but it's not like my end all be all. I'll be so disappointed if I don't reach certain numbers. But as of right now, making this video, 4,222. So I'm kind of thinking maybe by the end of July, I'll hit 5K. We'll see. Move to a new apartment will happen in June. So that's coming up. Max out 2023 Roth IRA. I have not contributed anything to it yet, but <laughs> but as I start getting paid for my new job, then we'll start making contributions. 5K dollars from social media. I actually will hit this on May 31st, which is very exciting, but it is not quite May 31st. Right now it is May 28th. I think I could color out my three paid brand deals box if I wanted to, but I'm kind of just waiting because technically I have one paid brand deal that carried over from 2022 into 2023. So if I were to count that one, it could be one. I worked with Spalux teeth just a few weeks ago as you know and then I am continuing to work with social work degrees so that's where it's like it could be three but I'm just gonna hold off buy a new sofa should happen once we get into that new apartment and can have figure out what we want where it fits vacation number one is done 
first vacation I took this year was in March to Tybee Island. And then while we're at it, we'll just give ahead a little bit. Vacation number two, I went to Columbia at the end of March. And what's exciting was at the beginning of the year, I didn't know about Tybee Island. It wasn't planned yet at that point. So in four days, I'm actually going to Costa Rica. And originally I thought that would be vacation number two, but we just threw an extra one in there. So those vacation goal one and two are already done. Buying a new vacuum should come whenever the paychecks come. I'm looking into getting a specific pet hair one, not because I have a pet, but because I shed so much hair and I need a vacuum that can handle that. <laughs> 52 main channel videos. I've switched between one and two videos a week so far during this year. So I definitely will hit 52, haven't yet, but I probably will before the end of the year since I've been doing two videos a week for a while. We'll talk more about this later. I'm at 66 books for this year so far and then get a different social work job. I have done that and you have seen the start of it too. So quite the transformation there. Once I buy a new sofa, technically I would have a bingo or if I got 10K and got a massage. So as part of the reset, and this is a plan for Sundays going forward, I'm going to plan out my week, like what each day holds, what it consists of, what I'm trying to get done in it. I'm not going to bring you along for that in this video because it's actually like a lengthy version this week because since I leave on Thursday of this week and then I get back on a Monday, I'm just going to plan out like that entire section so that when I get back, I can kind of hit the ground running. Like I don't have to take the time then to think of like, oh, what are my work hours? What do I have going on? So instead of telling you all that I'm doing in the next two weeks, it'll just come in future videos, which brings us to our monthly metrics. This is a section that I've done before, but I've never called it that because I've never lumped them all together. But just some numbers to look back on for the month. As we all know by now, I've gotten back into running. And so I thought that would be kind of fun to track like as the months go forward of just how many miles I run in a month. And so for this reset, in April, I ran 6.1 miles. I started running, I think April 27th. And then in May, I will have run 40.3 miles. And since my distance, I'm just trying to up it. Hopefully that number increases <laughs> each month. So so far, 6.1, 40.3. Monthly metrics for YouTube analytics. Figure we just kind of do a whole year recap real quick. But in January, I gained 300 new people. In February, we gained 270 new people. March, 310. April, 310. And so far in May, 300. So that is just mind boggling to me. That's just a little bit under like my graduating class each month coming to join the channel. So welcome. Welcome January crew, February crew, <laughs> May crew. <laughs> Glad to have you here. With that, because these have been kind of fun to look at in previous monthly reset videos. My top five videos in March were the social work careers video, what I wish I knew before I majored in social work, a day in the life of a social worker, the one from October, ecological systems theory, and a complete guide to UA housing. Usually these five for the past few months have been pretty consistent. April threw things off because in April I posted my quitting my job video and that one took the number one spot. The clicks on that video were insane, which means in April, number one, quitting my job, two social work careers, three day in the life, four, what I wish I knew five was ecological systems theory and then May goes kind of back to the normal one social work careers two day in the life three what I wish I knew four ecological systems theory and five back to a complete guide to UA housing if you're someone who also posts on YouTube it's just kind of fun to know a lot of the videos that get the most views for me and I think for other people too are those really searchable videos if a video of mine is just work week in the life there's so many people that post those kinds of videos so you're less likely to get clicked on from those search but for example like the ecological systems theory video if someone is looking for that my my video is going to pop up and they're going to click on it, <laughs> which is also true for some of the more social work driven ones of like day in life of a social worker. If people are looking for that and then previously people have been clicking on that video, then usually it's higher up in YouTube search. So my guess is that a lot of the new subscribers came from a lot of those videos. My sheets just got done getting washed and they were doing the thing whenever you can hear like how much it is stunking during the spin cycle because I guess they're just so bulky. But to the point, these used to be in line with each other. The washer scooted itself that far up <laughs> from my sheets.
It's book time. It's been too long. I know I mentioned whenever we were going over the yearly goals that I created my booktube channel at the end of last year and then I haven't posted on it since February, I think. I don't regret creating it because a lot of the videos on there I really, really enjoyed filming just whenever my life started to blow up a little bit, just some big changes. It obviously was not sustainable to make videos for two channels and so I poured myself into this one because this is the main one that I care about. And then I haven't decided if I'm going to do more reading vlogs over there or if I'll just start putting them on here. I don't know yet. Kind of rethinking it. But what that means for this reset video is that we'll do a quick book recap. I'm not going to go over every single book I've read since March because that honestly would just be a lot. But you can follow me on Goodreads for sure. Sometimes I'll post about books on Instagram. I've kind of fallen out of the habit of doing that lately. And I mostly just pulled some standouts that we'll talk about. But overall, this is my favorite statistic to show for books. This is for March 2023. The main moods that I read were lighthearted, emotional, and mysterious with the main genres being romance, mystery, and contemporary. A standout book that I read in March was Next Year in Havana by Chanel Clayton. What's funny is I actually own the second book in this little series. I think with the series it's like it follows a different family member so it's not necessarily like chronological order of events but I own the second book and I'd ordered it like maybe last November, December, January not knowing that it was the second book of a series and then I also got Next Year from Havana later in March from the library not piecing together that it was like the first book of that series so I do already own the second one but basically Next Year in Havana is a historical fiction and it takes place in Cuba and I I really really enjoyed this book because it read like a story that I was very invested in but I ended up learning so much about Cuban history through reading the book without feeling like I was reading a textbook or anything like it still was a very immersive emotional story with great characters that I really love and I came out with like so much knowledge so that's why I really liked that one afterwards I definitely like had to let my brain my brain felt like mush <laughs> just because there was so much in that book but it was just quite good and taught me a lot that I didn't even know I didn't know these are eight April stats. The most moods that I read in April were emotional, reflective, and mysterious. And the biggest genres that I read in April were contemporary and thriller. Some standouts for April. Mr. Frederick Bachman. I read Bear Town. It was my first book that I read in 2023. And then I read Us Against You, which is the sequel of that in April. It wrecked me. I have not pursued reading the third book yet because I don't think I can still emotionally handle it. I feel like I'm still kind of recovering. They are written so beautifully. It's from so many different characters that you get to know. So in the beginning of Bear Town, I was a little stressed because they kept mentioning people and I'd have to like flip backwards and be like, oh, who is this again? Oh, this is the hockey coach. Oh, this is the high schooler. But the atmosphere is so well done. The characters, you really feel like you get to know, but it's not just the individuals that you get to know. You get to know the community as a whole. Every single character is so morally gray, just like people are. So you're cheering for everyone and hating everyone. And there's just so many different dynamics going on. It, they are such good reads. I have not read others by Frederick Bach like his other novels. I read the novella and Every Morning the Way Home Gets Longer. I read that. It also wrecked me. I haven't read his other novels, but Bear Town and Us Against You both were five stars within the first like 30 pages. So good. Another standout from April was Happy Place by Emily Henry. I had been anticipating this book so much. It's the only book I've ever pre-ordered ever in my life. It wasn't perfect. Like people have valid critiques about the plot and the characters and everything. Definitely was not perfect, but I definitely really enjoyed my time reading it. It's a contemporary fiction. It includes romance. It includes friendships. It includes like deep insights about relationship. I didn't like it as much as book lovers but I think the main reason for that being that the little deep insights that book lovers had just hit more home for me than the little deep insights that Happy Place had but there are definitely people for whom Happy Place is gonna poke you deep in the soul that you didn't know you needed poke. I've not finished May yet. I still have a few days. I think I'll probably finish like one more book so May has not been as heavy of a reading month. I kind of got into a slump at the beginning of the month just because I'd been unemployed for so long and I was feeling like I've read every book that there ever has been written which obviously is not true and then it took me starting work to start like really wanting to read again because I didn't have the time as much anymore so then it was like I got out of my slump and I really wanted to read and I really wanted to read every book ever but then I didn't have as much time so both of those little May eras just resulted in not a whole lot of reading for me and what I usually read but the main moods were hopeful and emotional I feel like every book I read is emotional it shocks me whenever emotional doesn't make its way into people's top moods because somehow it is like always always in mind and the main genres so far have been contemporary and literary a May standout so far was An Ember in the Ashes, which is a YA fantasy book that came out in 2016. I think from listening to other people talk about it that it was like a big high school book that people kind of got obsessed with in high school. I never even heard of it. Don't know how I missed it. I believe there are four books in the series. I only read one of them. It definitely ends in a way that you need to pick up the next one to keep on going. Like there's no closure or anything at all. It read YA. Like it was not perfect. It was not the greatest thing ever. But why it's making the honorable mentions is because it made me just really want to read fantasy. 
I feel like fantasy has been growing in popularity lately and I'll hear people talk about it and just not care. Just be like, oh, okay, okay. Good for you that you enjoy that. And this one I was like, I need to read more fantasy. We'll see how that ends up. Some upcoming books that I'm looking forward to. I'm a little bit into this one so far. The Matchmaker's Gift by Linda Cohen Loigman. This has been so sweet so far. It is qualified as fantasy, but it is magical realism. So it's very different than A Number in the Ashes. But it follows Sarah in the early 1900s who has a little gift where she knows people's matches and she has a 100% success rate of people that she matches up, stay married, stay in love, they're soulmates. Kind of where the little magical realism comes in. You know, she has a gift. And then we also jump forward in chapters in the 1990s where Sarah's granddaughter is a divorce lawyer who does not believe in marriage, does not believe in like long-term love necessarily. Her parents had had this awful divorce that her mom got the short end of the stick in. And Sarah's granddaughter, I forget what her name is, Abby. Abby loves her grandmother, obviously, but also is kind of like, oh, okay, like that kind of cuckoo matchmaking you used to do. And this happens so early in the book, but then Sarah does pass away. She's like 90 something. And she leaves her old journals to Abby that go into her like matchmaking matches, I guess. And we're still alternating chapters. So it's like, we get to see them in real time. And then we also get to see Abby reading about them. That's as far as I've gotten so far. I imagine, I think it says it in the summary too. I imagine that Miss Divorce Lawyer Abby is also going to have like the same gift that her grandma had and she's going to navigate that. But it's been feel good so far. Maybe there'll be tough stuff to come, but I just feel like with this cover, like that's so, that's so sweet. And like I said, it is fantasy. It's magical realism. So it's not like Ember in the Ash, not quite what I was talking about when I said I needed to get into more fantasy, but it is fantasy. This is a book that I've been wanting to pick up for the longest because I saw Allison Pages recommend it as like one of her very favorite. It's called A Psalm for the Wild Built by Becky Chambers. This is just one of the blurbs on the back. Reading this book felt like a warm cup of tea made by someone who loves me. It made me cry the good sort of tears, the sort when someone is unexpectedly kind to you in the moment you need the most. That's what I want in a book. It's been centuries since the robots of Pinga gained self-awareness and laid down their tools. Centuries since they wandered en masse into the wilderness never to be seen again. Centuries since they faded into myth and urban legend. One day, the life of a tea monk is upended by the arrival of a robot, there to honor the old promise of checking in. The robot has one question, what do people need? But the answer to that question depends on who you ask and how. They're going to need to ask it a lot. It's cute, it's short, and I'm really excited. I hope it makes my heart feel warm and fuzzy. And then these other two are keeping in mind that I'm about to go to Costa Rica, be on the beach, be on the pool. Hotel Laguna is an arc that I got from a bookstore in town where it's like if you purchase a book, they also have an arc shelf that you can just get them for free. But it comes out in June. So whenever I got this, I was like, oh, I have all the time in the world until June when this comes out. And now it is the end of May. In 1942, Hazel Francis left Wichita, Kansas for California, determined to do her part for the war effort. At Douglas Aircraft, she became one of the many Rosie the Riveters helping construct bombers for the US military. But now the war is over, men have returned to their factory jobs and women like Hazel have been dismissed, expected to return home to become wives and mothers. Unwilling to be forced into a traditional woman's role in the Midwest, Hazel remains on the West Coast and finds herself in the bohemian town of Laguna Beach. Desperate for work, she accepts a job as an assistant to famous artist Hanson Radcliffe. Beloved by the locals for his contributions to the art scene and respected by the critics, Radcliffe lives under the shadow of decades-old scandal that haunts him. Working hard to stay on her employer's good side, Hazel becomes a valued member of the community. She never expected to fall in love with the rhythm of life in Laguna, nor did she expect to find a kindred spirit in Jimmy, the hotel bartender whose friendship promises something more. But Hazel still wants to work with airplanes, maybe even learn to fly one day. Torn between pursuing her dream and the dream life she has been granted, she is unsure if giving herself over to Laguna is what her heart truly wants. And the blurb says, perfect to slip into your beach bag, so that is what I'm planning to do. Miss Queen herself, Ellen Hildebrand, the perfect couple. I don't know anything about this book, but it's beach book. I have loved so many of Ellen Hildebrand's books that I've read. 28 Summers was great. The Hotel Nantucket was so great. I feel like she single-handedly is making random people who hardly ever heard of Nantucket before fall in love with Nantucket, of which I am one. I haven't even read the back for this one. In Storygraph, it's classified as a contemporary mystery, so maybe the perfect couple isn't so perfect. Oh, and on the front, it says a clever whodunit. Also perfect to fit into a beach bag, and I will be doing just that. I'm getting ready to go to Silent Book Club and this was the outfit I picked for myself and looking at, I feel like it looks better in the camera than in the mirror. I just feel like <laughs> the pants are so high waisted and the shirt is so short. Maybe that, maybe it's fine though. Maybe it's fine though, right? Is it bad? Then I'm just gonna wear like tennis shoes. Oh well, I already have a very short torso so might as well accentuate. <laughs> A 
Okay, and lastly for this reset video is talking about focuses or intentions coming up. I guess you could call them goals, but I feel like my year-long goals are the goals, so focuses and intentions. I mentioned this recently, but I think I'm going to make an effort to start doing no phone in bed, both morning and night. I do imagine that when I'm getting into my work routine, that'll start to come a little bit more naturally, like just getting in bed and either reading and then going to sleep or just going to sleep, or in the morning when I wake up, just waking up. Since I am trying to build distance with my runs, by the end of June, I want to have reached a 10K, so 6.1 miles, which if I do so, like if I do so successfully, nothing happens, I'm just kind of waiting till I reach that 10K, I'm going to register for a half marathon. Obviously, I'll keep you updated along that. I have not registered for any race yet, considering the longest that I've run is four miles. And then in July, the goal is to get up to 10 miles. Just keep building on Saturdays, keep building during the long runs. Next I have, have grace with the routine switch up. I think that, I think I've been really much better at like being nice to myself, not beating myself up. But fact of the matter is, I went from being a unemployed lump on a log to working full time for a week. Then I was gone that entire weekend, so I didn't get to have like do anything over the weekend, like here as far as is like maintaining a home goes. <laughs> then I came back, worked full time for another week. Now we're on a three day weekend. I'll work two days and then go to Costa Rica for 12 days and then come back and I'll be starting to work full time regularly and then we'll be moving, which is just obviously another change. So I'm not going to have a set routine until mid July, maybe. <laughs> mid-March to mid-July is just gonna be no man's land and so this intention is just being okay with that like just kind of you know rolling with the punches right in the wave understanding that life is different right now and that's okay like it's for good reasons quitting my job was good being an employee was good starting a new job is good going to Costa Rica is good like it's all good reasons but I think it's easy to look in on other people's lives and be like oh I'm so chaotic which I am right now and that's okay <laughs> next I have seek joy in the learning I really like to be good at things and starting a new job like I'm not gonna be good at it right off the bat but it is special to get to learn new things and to get to build new skills and to get to know new environments and new people so I'm going to be trying to seek joy in the learning <laughs> be okay with not being you know great for a while and then I also have more social slash fun activities what's kind of funny about that is because I'm about to leave for vacation for 12 days so like that's going to be different but I think just overall in this summer trying to get up and do more fun things in living a balanced life I think lots of times you can prioritize things and it makes like other things be lower down you know in the balance and then sometimes oh this thing might be higher and then this thing is lower and it's just kind of finding like making sure that different areas of life get their eras that you're focusing in on them and I've talked about this at length eh, at like medium length before but I feel like the social aspect of my life right now has just been the one that I've like kind of given up like whenever I was in grad school and was working and like doing a lot <laughs> I didn't prioritize the social part because I just like felt like I didn't have time but then I kind of got into the habit of that and then like with my weird schedule with my job I couldn't really do things on the weekends with jail but I also didn't really try to and like I'll hang out with people but not necessarily like follow up so I just want the more social aspect to be something that I kind of push higher in the balance and I think what's different too is that from when I moved to Atlanta I never knew like a long-term plan necessarily like when I moved to Atlanta we weren't sure if Zach was going to do his planned gap year in Atlanta or somewhere else so like at the time I moved I was like okay we'll be here a year and then after that I was like okay we'll be here another year thinking we we're going to move after that year and so I think partly too I didn't want to invest deep in like people I guess that sounds bad because I felt like I wasn't gonna be here that long and so it's like okay like what if I make these great friends and then I just up and leave whereas now we're not just upping and leaving staying in Atlanta for the foreseeable so I feel like it makes it easier to be like okay I'm like digging in <laughs> digging in. Thanks for joining on this reset video today. These are so fun. This one was different than the previous ones that I've done, but also it's been three months since I've done any, so I hope it was enjoyable. If you want to see more like this, maybe irregularly, maybe spanning three months at a time, or every month again, if you want to make an effort for that, just let me know. I enjoy watching other people's, so I also enjoy making them myself. Make sure you're subscribed before you go. It means the world. Know that you are appreciated, and I want to challenge you to let someone in your life know that they are appreciated today as well. Be so kind yourself and I'll see you next time.